Next up, let's talk about function arguments. Arguments is really a fancy term for inputs to a function. And right now, our functions don't expect, they don't accept any inputs. They behave the same way every time. So we wrote that silly grumpus function. And this is kind of what happens here, visually at least. If this is the function, we don't pass any inputs in. We just call grumpus the exact same way every time. And we get the same output, those three console.logs. Now, I didn't write them here because they took up too much space, so we get this little grumpy kid instead. But it's the same output every time, the same three lines that are printed. Here's another example, a function that I'm calling greet. Just type it up very quickly. And all it does is console.log hi every single time. If I run it and I call greet, we can't impact it. We don't pass anything in. It works the same way. No inputs, same output. Now this doesn't necessarily mean we'll always get the exact same output. As we saw with our roll die function, we did get a different output because we're using random numbers, but we're not altering the behavior when we call it. We call roll die the exact same way every single time. We're not impacting it. We're just saying roll a die and it picks a random number. But it would be nice if we could specify if this was a six sided die or a 12 sided die or something like that and we would do that by passing in an argument. So those inputs that we pass in, as I've already mentioned, are called arguments. Here's an example of an updated version of greet where we could pass in a value for someone's name. So if we call greet and then we pass in Tim, the output could be, hi Tim. If we did it with Anya, we could get the output of hi Anya. Still very simple stuff. Here's another example, a hypothetical function called average and it takes multiple arguments, two or four, maybe 10, and the output will be the average. So it will sum them all together and then divide by the number of inputs. So 20 plus 25 divided by two, 22.5. These four numbers divided by four gives us four. And we've already seen arguments quite a bit in the built-in methods we've been working with. Something like two uppercase, expects no inputs. We don't pass anything in, it just uppercases something. It's kind of like our initial version of greet. It does the same thing. But then we have things like index of, or includes, or splice, or slice, where we have to specify inputs. We have to tell it, in the case of index of, what string we're looking for in hello. And we get different behaviors and different outcomes. If we pass in an H, index of zero. If we pass in an O, we get index of four. We're specifying additional information. So how do we make our functions expect arguments and use those values in the code, in the function body? It's pretty simple. All we do is inside of our function definition, instead of empty parentheses, we add in some variable name. So this has to be a valid JavaScript identifier. It can't have spaces, it can't start with a number, but otherwise we can name it whatever we want. And just like with a for of loop, where we had for let x of some array, let's say the array one, two, three, this x doesn't matter what we call it at all, but it will hold the value each time through this loop of one of these elements. We kind of do the same thing for a function. If we wanted to update our greet function to accept somebody's name, I would go maybe with nickname or person, and we put that in the parentheses. This does not do anything on its own, it will only work if we pass in a string or a number or some value when we call greet. But let's console.log nickname. Nickname will hold the value of whatever is passed in. JavaScript doesn't care what the type is, if it's a string or even an array. It just cares that it's the first thing that was passed in and it will be assigned to nickname. That's just a, a sort of a placeholder name. You wanna give it something that makes sense, a name that is logical. So nickname is fine. Let's see what happens now. I'm printing out nickname on the first line. Let's call greet and then pass in Tim. And there we go. You can see the first console.log says nickname, which is Tim. So nickname had the value of Tim because that's what I passed in. If I pass something else in, like a number, nickname has that value. It could be an array, how about an empty array? We console.log empty array. And what if I don't pass anything in? In some languages, this could cause an error. In JavaScript, it doesn't care. 
it says there's no value, it's undefined, but it doesn't break anything, it's just not there. Nickname just didn't have a value. So let's rewrite this just to be slightly nicer. We'll use backticks and we'll greet the person. Hi, and then dollar sign, nickname. And maybe an exclamation point afterwards. Run it again, greet Tim. Hi, Tim. Okay, so we're console.logging something different based off of the input. The input has a direct impact on what the function actually does. Next up, let's try modifying roll die or throw dice. These two functions, let's pick one. I'll uncomment them both. Let's go with throw dice. So right now, throw dice always calls roll die six times. If I call it over here, throw dice, it rolls six dice. It calls roll die six times. But what if we could specify a number of times? How many times we actually want to roll? Maybe we're playing a game where you have two dice, but maybe we're playing another game like Yahtzee where you have five or six. I don't remember how many it actually uses, but it's more than two. We could pass in an argument and let's give it a name. We'll talk more about terminology here. Technically, the variables we write here are called parameters, not arguments. Let's go with times or num rolls. Maybe that's better, num rolls. And then in here, we'll use this to repeat roll die. So how do we repeat something? We'll use a loop. So we'll loop for, we'll just do a for loop. Let's i equals zero. Well, i is less than num rolls. Add one to i each time and we'll call roll die. So if we pass in five, we'll go from zero and then up to five, but not including five. Or we could go from one and then less than or equal to num rolls. I'll just go with zero because we don't care about what i actually is. We just want a certain number of times. So let's see if it works. Throw dice. And I do need to pass in a number like three. We got three rolls. How about five? We get five rolls. It combined two of them because they were identical. Thanks, Chrome console nine we get nine rolls now we've written it so that we can impact the way it behaves based off of a single input all right so that's good enough for now in the next video we'll see how we can have multiple arguments how the order matters and we'll start writing some more complicated functions